okay so i i hope that you guys are able to see my screen right so now i'm on a board you can you can respond guys okay at least i would expect yes no from at least one or two folks am i audible yes yes audible okay okay so today's topic is <coughs> corporate actions and their important types so that we're going to cover so i would expect that you guys are also writing down in all important points otherwise uh, that would be difficult for you to recall everything and i don't think so you would be go through the uh, recordings after the sessions if you are that's fine see but still okay okay so uh, why companies announce corporate actions so there would be you know uh, you would see when company announce corporate actions every company comes with different uh, purpose but if you ask me generic purpose is why company announce corporate actions then i would say if company or board want to restructure maybe company's debt maybe operations department or any business ke if they want to uh, expand or maybe shut down their business units and all so in that case or maybe let's say conversion of uh, bonds into equities and all so that all types of actions we treat as a restructuring including debt repayment also if company want to repay the debt of shareholders that also comes under your corporate restructuring so it means the main purpose would be why company if you, if you see any question is such why company announce corporate actions so the main purpose would be or the purpose would be i would say to restructuring their corporate maybe debts business or any other you know any plan if they have so that you can treat as a restructuring okay the second purpose that you can say if company want to impact the share price so what it means impact the share price and why company will uh, announce events like this if i take the example of 3i infotech all examples you can write it down right while answering to the corporate actions questions you can give the reference of those practical examples as well okay so impacting share price it means now you can note it down the example that is 3i infotech 3i infotech is a it company so their share price was 1 rupees for a long so it means for more than 5 years that i saw the share price was between trailing between 1 to 5 rupees so they wanted to they wanted or the board wanted the appreciation in the share price but unfortunately they uh, they couldn't see the appreciation in the price for a long just because the supply of shares was high and demand of shares demand it means Uh, the shareholders means much of investors wasn't interested in the 3i infotech shares so that was affecting on the demand as well and the price basically it is the game of demand and supply if the supply is high and demand is low then you cannot expect appreciation in the price of shares and why there will be high demand to the shares why there will be high uh, the the investors will pay attention on particular securities only if the company has a high potential high potential 
So it means Tria Infotech was facing some issues in terms of liquidity, in terms of debt, in terms of even business operations, revenue, margin, much more. And that's what the demand of a, uh, shares was low and the supply was very high. And that's the reason when the supply, it's a normal economic term or that might be you guys are already aware about it. If the supply is high and demand is low, then automatically that will affect on the share price. But here that the company wanted the appreciation in the price or impact on share price that the board wanted. Who joined it? I would request guys, please join, you know, at the same time because that doesn't make any sense if you just join back to back after a few minutes that will really creating you know problem for me so don't do this it's a humble request <coughs> okay so that will affect on the share price of a 3i uh, in food tech right and the board wanted some appreciation then boards comes with the resolution when we say resolution, it means board approach to the board approach to the reverse split. Reverse split. So it means they reduce. When we say reverse split, it means that reduced the supply of shares. Supply of shares from the market, and now we go and check it. The price of a Thea Infotech in the market is around 47 to, it was reached to the 1110 even. It was reached to the 1110 post corporate actions, but due to some fear of recession and then again, uh, the margin affected badly. So price, which is at around 47 or maybe 30 in between, but before that it was around one to five rupees in between. So if you see that, so automatically price adjusted. So and even the reverse split is the part of adjustments of corporate action event. So try to understand that. If the board want to impact the share price, in that case also board comes with the corporate action plans as well. Vice versa, if I take the example of, for a same impacting of share price, if I take the example of MRF. Have you guys aware about MRF? So what is the price of MRF securities? Right now 82, 85, 90, 90,000 rupees. It was reached to the 99 even, if I'm not wrong. It was reached to the 99k even. There are many more companies like Honeywell. Anyway, price was in between 45,000K. Then uh, there was a one more company like Dixon Technology. Dixon Tech. Price was around 40,000 or 39 in between. See the prices. I'll ask one question to you. Everyone, so might be you're earning in between, monthly you're earning in between 1 to, sorry, 10,000 to, let's say 1 lakh in between for per month. I'm just assuming, okay? So think practically. So will you afford MRF shares for investment? Because sometime investor will think I'm paying 1 lakh rupees and I'm getting only 1 shares. Then why should I invest? So I want, see, if the price of securities is high, so that doesn't mean it is a, it is kind of, uh, you know, uh, in the security, that particular security is not affordable or not kind of like not in line with the valuation. No, not from that aspect. Still that security will be in a line with the valuation and all. So it is all about perception that the investor will always kind of think about the quantities if i'm paying one lakh then i need at least 100 quantities i need at least 50 quantities then why should i pay 45000 or 40000 for one quantity 
सो इट इज ऑल अबाउट परसेप्शन राइट एंड इफ दैट परसेप्शन क्रिएट्स देन इट्स बिकम डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रिंग द रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स लाइक अस इन अ पाइपलाइन टू बाय एंड सेल द सिक्योरिटीज इन द मार्केट एंड लेट मी टेल यू द फैक्ट इफ द सिक्योरिटी प्राइसेस आर हाई देन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टॉक विल फेस द लिक्विडिटी इश्यूज and if that stock will face the liquidity issues in the market so sometime you would see suddenly this stock will have a upper circuit or lower circuit automatically and then most of the traders even they will not approach that particular security and uh, that's that's not the good sign or indicator for that particular stock and that's the reason stocks comes with the resolution plan so when you say resolution it means they wanted to again split the shares in that event we call it as reverse split sorry not reverse split split where company can split the shares price maybe you can say company actually split the market uh, sorry or the face value of a shares but that will affect or that price will adjust <coughs> in the market value of uh, shares as well so stock exchange will adjust that a new price will released on the market right so eventually so you can relate so again purpose is if if someone asks why why the company will announce corporate actions if company want to impact the security prices in the market in that case also company will come up with the uh this particular you know uh, stock split or reverse split corporate action events and you can provide the real examples mrf honeywell dixon only honeywell or dixon that i would say they have announced but mrf they didn't announce anything still they are fine with their whatever price which is having in market so you don't need to provide example as an example of mrf but you can provide dixon and honeywell if you want right so write down all this practical examples also so ah uh, again so would like to brief uh, or provide one more example with the restructuring restructuring it means it can be you know a debt restructuring or it can be even to raise fresh capital from the existing shareholders also so it is all about restructure So there are three categories. Means you can categorize corporate actions in a three ways. One that is restructuring, other that is impacting, and then distribution of profit. When we say restructuring, this is more towards like raising of capital, raising of capital, and repayment of capital. repayment of capital so how you can repay the capital raise capital or how you can raise the capital maybe from new investors or existing investors so that depends so when when you raise new capital so you have options like you can raise capital through ipo initial public offering so that depends whether you want to hello yes Hello guys am i am i audible to you Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Now, yes, yes. no. thank you, Kiran. Kiran lost network. 
So you are able to see my screen, right, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So, ah, uh, yeah. So we'll continue from here. <laughs> so when we say restructuring, it means so you can relate with the when company want to raise new capital or maybe capital from the existing shareholders, right? And other one would be when you raise capital, of course, you will have to repay. It. Maybe in a near term, or maybe at the time of shut down the business operations. But yes, it will have to repay the capital of maybe shareholders, bondholders, or uh, other loan holders or data creditors. If you see in a business, it will have to repay their capital and all. But if I take the example when company want to restructure the business, so let's assume it now company want to raise the capital. When company want to raise the capital. So you will have options. One that is you can raise the capital from IPO event, initial public offering. So here you can list your common stocks and raise the new capital from the public, mutual fund, hedge fund, institutional investors, then uh, any other like pension funds, colleges, universities. If they are also interested, so they can also invest and participate in your you know events like IPO and all. and they provide funding to your business so that's the one way where you can raise the capital from the new investors other example that i would like to put here let's say right distributions right distributions if company want to raise the capital again maybe to expand the business operations or to mitigate the liquidity demand of the you know their business in that case company can come up with the right distribution event where company can announce rights offer to the existing shareholders company can announce rights to the existing shareholders if they are interested they will participate if not then they will not participate and that's what even that you can treat as a optional event or uh, i would say in a voluntary event where company will not force to anyone that will be depends on the shareholders whether they want to participate or not so they will decide it but again that is also part of the restructuring where company want to restructure their business or restructure their debt <coughs> right then other example if you ask me let's say company want to issue the bonds company want to list the bonds let's say 81 bonds or maybe normal bonds floating bonds fixed bonds redeemable bonds irredeemable bonds convertible bonds callable bonds putable bonds if company want to list the bonds they can come up with the other of the you know type any of the type let's say redeemable bonds up to 5 years with the 5% coupon rate company can list that bonds and raise the funding for the business company can also raise the funds through lbo leveraged by out so where company can sign the agreement with the private equity firms or maybe hedge funds or any other institution if they are interested to invest in a xyz you know company where they can sign the lbo leverage by out with the different terms of repayment of capital or maybe convert that lbo into equity and bonds you can see the mixture of that as well so those are the flavors which you would see in the lbo or any other you know debt obligations and in that way they can sign the obligations and enter into the contract so that is also comes under your restructuring sometime you would see the loan obligations normal loan obligations loan obligations maybe with a repayment 
option or either you can see loans comes with so entire loans will be converted into bonds that will be for two to three years or maybe five years and again bonds will be converted into equity or preference equity right so you would see that loans which also comes under your restructuring portion and then apart from that so famous and popular corporate actions if you would see that comes under the restructuring is the return of capital so when you raise when you raise capital through bonds equity debentures loan obligations then of course we will have to return that capital to the investor back whatever the you know or the maturity date was decide on that date you will have to execute the return of capital events and you will have to return the uh, that capital to the investors back and that also you can treat means even that you uh, <coughs> that event or activity you can treat as a return of capital sometime return of capital that you would say like it's kind of an optional event where you will get the options whether you want to participate in roc return of capital event or not if you want to participate in roc then that becomes your voluntary events and if not then that will apply that action will apply to all the corporate action uh, that uh, equity holders or maybe bond holders loan holders of a company then you can see it's a mandatory return of capital event so you would see means there are the many more actions but yes those are the popular ones so which you would see that comes under the corporate restructuring see the purpose is one term but how you can relate try to write down in this way so where you can relate easily right so there are only three main purposes where you can elaborate like re restructuring under restructuring so you can put these examples return of capital bonds right distributions uh, then <coughs> ipo initial public offering even stock dividends and all if, uh, sorry bonus issues and all if company want to uh, issue the, or list the bonus securities to utilize their internal you know reserves and all so in that way company can comes with the bonus issues so you can put all these examples under this corporate restructuring okay and if you answer like this that becomes more impact anyways then here with the impacting of shares see when you raise capital so it's a very the logic is very simple so when you raise capital and if you don't entertain to your investors by announcing xyz you know actions then they will not uh, be with your you know company for a long then they will get bored and automatically they look for other company for investment and that's the reason company comes with impacting of shares price sometime maybe from the investor perspective sometime maybe from their own that uh, the companies the different purposes like in case of 3i infotech so already i give you the example about so why company wanted to impact the share price of the securities and even uh, the dixon technology also that already i gave you the example why the company wanted to announce stock split so here you can put the examples like stock split reverse split merger acquisition in mna mna also comes here as well okay but you would see impact on a price as well due to the merger and acquisition so you can consider under this too <coughs> right you can put this two examples Sir, delisting will also come under corporate restructuring when company wants to delist. Delisting here, restructuring. Corporate restructuring, yeah. Delisting, liquidations, redemptions.
So under return of capital, you can you know again note it down this redemption delisting these two events. Return of capital. So that is return of capital. It means it's a main heading. So under that you would see withdrawal, redemptions, distributions, delistings. Those events will comes under the ROC. Right? And now just put a logic. When you raise capital, then definitely if company announce or company want to impact share price, so they can announce different actions like stock split, reverse split, or MNA that you would see. But when company raise debt, so that Debt comes will comes with obligations. It can be you know uh, uh, flexible obligations in terms of common equity. It's not mandated to. There is no mandate provision that you know nobody will even though uh, as a GMT also we haven't uh, mentioned any mandate provision where we'll distribute the profit of companies to the shareholders. So almost we have ten thousand outstanding securities. I am holding around 59%. The rest, the other investors, they are holding. So it means that uh, <coughs> the distribution of profit that will be like voluntary provision. But once you once you record that uh, the term or provision, then you will have to follow that. Then you cannot violate that provision. And just because of that, most of the you know uh, companies, the uh, they they provide kind of the voluntary provision in their document or investment prospectus where if company now if company on profit then they will distribute that profit to the shareholder so that won't be mandate provision to the company when we say mandate then that becomes obligation and when we say obligation it means if you don't uh, follow that obligations or honor that obligations. So that means it's a violation of obligation that comes with again penalty and the other regulatory charges as well. Just because of that, on a common equity, we get the flexible dividend option. And even though under under common stock, you would see class of shares, class A, class B, class C. So in that case, so you might see, let's say class A, it's a mandate to get dividend. Maybe class B, let's say six or seven percent dividend is mandate. Maybe class D. You would see uh, again dividend payout annually or quarterly mandates whether company and profit or not. So you would see that classes. But when we say only common, pure common stock, then that company you know uh, pay the flexible dividends to the common uh, stock shareholders. The same way, if I take the example of bonds or loan holders or LBO, so they earn the interest payment when company earn profit. So they distribute, they distribute interest or the whatever obligations kind of that you can see coupons and all they announce and provide it to the bond holders, loan holders or any other you know debt holders if you see like debentures. So company announce coupons to them when company earn profit. So under distribution of profit, so you can put these two terms, dividends. And interest payment. So company distribute from the company's profit. When company earn profit, company distribute the interest payment and also company distributes the dividends to the preference and common equity holders. So these are the main you know three purposes which you can define or even elaborate if you if someone asks question to you. Why company announce corporate action? Why company announce corporate actions? Now you can unmute and ask me questions, whatever the doubt you have with regards to this. Come on. Take 30 seconds and Whatever, whatever doubts that you have, I would expect questions. Uh, Shivraj, yeah. like uh, there, there will be times where the market price of a share would be changing in the market. So actually that doesn't impact the financials of a company, right? Like then why company wants to uh, control that share price and announce stock split, reverse split? 
see ultimately the promoters of the business they hold 70 to 80 percent shares think practically you are the promoter of 3i infotech and you are holding 60 to 70 percent shares public is holding around 10 or 15 percent or 25 means 70 percent you are holding it so in short you are holding the 70 percent value of 3i infotech if you take the same example then don't you think that the share price of 3i infotech that should high or that should uh, volatile in the market or i would say at the price that should be appreciated in the market because you are holding 70 percent value okay right just put a logic yes As a promoter you are also holding the securities so what we believe like adani want to distribute the profit just put a logic or adani or amani want to distribute the profit but adani holding 70 percent shares in his business if company want to announce 100 crore, let's assume it, 100 crore, Adani will earn only 70 crore. And don't you think that Adani want to control the security prices in market also? Yes, he does. If 70 right. crore, he'll earn. Take the example of Ammani even. Ammani holding around 70% in Reliance Industries. And go and check it. So quarterly that the uh, Reliance industry earns around 20,000 crore profit. Quarterly that I'm talking about. So yearly it goes around 1 lakh crore profit. If you are holding major portion, then of course you will try to control the market prices of securities also. If the market prices goes down, then your business valuation also goes down. The reason is, always we pull the dates or pull the investments in the business on the basis of market value also. We sell the market value to the other investors and then we raise the debt. And that will affect on the uh, your debts plan as well. So how, I'll just put one example. So in short, let's say you have your property. So you have your property, okay? So this is your, so this is your home. So current value of this property is one CR, right? Property value is one CR. You are looking for a loan. Current, this is your current current value, okay? Current market price. You are looking for a loan. When you approach to the bank or to any individual, when you approach to the bank for one CR loan, bank will perform valuation, right? Bank will perform valuation and then bank is agreed with one CR, let's assume it. Bank is agreed with one CR loan obligation. What if after the loan agreement, after the loan agreement, price drops from one CR to 80 lakhs? Just think practically what will happen in this case. Can anyone tell me? What will happen? Come on guys, Rajan. Price drops from after the loan execution, after the loan, price drops, that particular property's price drops in market. Nirmal, what will happen in this case? Come on. 
బ్యాంకు లాస్ ఫర్ మోర్ కొలాట్రల్ ద బ్యాంకు లాస్ ఫర్ మోర్ కొలాట్రల్ ఐ డోంట్ హావ్ ఎనీ మీన్స్ టేక్ యువర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ యు డోంట్ హావ్ ఎనీ మోర్ కొలాట్రల్ ఇవ్ ఓన్లీ యు హాడ్ దిస్ కొలాట్రల్ హోమ్ అండ్ యు ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ఇట్ యు ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ రైట్ టు సెల్ మీన్స్ యాజ్ అ కొలాట్రల్ యు హావ్ ఆల్్రెడీ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ కొలాట్రల్ టు ద బ్యాంక్ so bank is holding rights you have already transfer it just put a logic think practically what will happen go back in history in 2008 ఇంక్రీస్ట్రేట్ signed agreement is signed. signed agreements and all so eventually guys bank will seal the property first of all bank will try to recover the price whatever price that will you know incur after the sell so bank will proceed with sell or immediately else first of all bank will discuss yeah. with the property owner that the property price or collateral price drops and that is the big risk for a bank if that guy can pay 20 lakhs immediately then this agreement will continue if not then bank will directly sell the property in the market and try to recover you know the amount as much well as they can the same logic same logic you can apply in the normal business also if you see the bond holders or debt holders like you know debenture holders in picture so it means company transfer the equity shares you know equity shares assets that the because equity shares are the owners of the business right equity shares are the owners of the business so that their assets means equity holders assets that company's board transfer as collateral to the bond holders So it means bond holders they hold this property rights r2s rights so instead home just replace it company right company's assets now who is holding let's say bank instead bank said let's say private equity funds or hedge funds or maybe uh, the any you know individual they are holding it so if the security price is means market price of the securities drops in the market then automatically the hedge funds private equity funds they'll put a lot of pressure on management they will have a two options whether they can repay their debts or else they will have to control the price of securities in market and that's the reason most of the businessmen like adani ambani or you know the mahindra they ensure it their security prices are in line in the market otherwise they will have to face to the bidding of their you know assets and then automatically because the bond holders they hold the rights of a sells means right to sell the property or right to sell the assets of the business so bond holders will take the control immediately and that's the reason so debt to equity ratio is important if the debt goes high then it means equity value will drop in the market automatically correct so if still if you are not able to understand this so i'll brief about the uh, the from the business perspective let's say company has assets office space
company office space value of 1 cr right technology value of 1 cr company has uh, the furniture or other equipments let's say 1 cr and company has also invested in lands as well OCR. So, what is the total company's assets? 5 CR? Come on, guys. Yeah, 5 CR. Total assets? So, very much practical. 5 CR. Let's say company split this assets into units. Directly, company split this book assets into units and company list the five, <coughs> five CR shares in the market. Then per shares value would be 1 rupees. Am I right? Per shares value? Yes, sir, 1. Then up to one year, let's assume it, up to one year, company was facing some liquidity issues. Company was facing some liquidity issues. Then company approached to the bondholder. Bondholder. What do you think? Bondholder will directly will transfer money to the you know company directly. Hmm? If company approach to the you know company approach to the bondholders to provide funding to the business, company has assets of five crore. Still, company has assets of five crore. So, what do you think? Will come will bondholders when company approach to the bondholders will bondholders will directly transfer cash to the company? What will happen? Come on. Come on, guys. Bondholders, they are ready with the cash. That's fine. I mean, so they have a cash. They might sign the agreement. They will issue bonds. And like office, bond. technology, equipment, lands, company will convert into Mortgage agreement. Company will convert into mortgage agreement. So and MBS and APS come under this. R to S right to sell agreement, and then they'll transfer. So now just put a logic. Your equity is value, guys. Your equity is value. Your equity is value agreement. Whatever. See, you have received the valuation of the assets. And the same valuations of the assets rights now company is transferring to whom? Transferring to the bondholders. So bondholders will get the rights of the shareholders' assets. You still you are the owner, right? Still you are the owner of the assets. But now the board of the company is transferring the R2S right to sell to the bondholder. And when the bondholders will get the rights to sell rights, then bondholders will transfer the cash to the company. Let's say 2 crore cash, 2 crore cash, the bondholders transfer to the, uh, <coughs> let's say GMT company. So now you tell me what would be the value of equity after the debt restructuring. Come on. Up 
after the restructuring what would be the value of debt this is a very basic that becomes 2 crores then in that case see after the debt also immediately you will have a cash so you you don't need to worry about it but when the company utilize the debt for their you know needs or purposes that matter a lot if they don't have any plan and if they utilize that debt whatever debt that they have received then ultimately this company will be in a debt and trap so the debt and equity ratio should be so equity is value automatically it seems like you know 0.8 so it was 1 rupees but now debt holder has a control on this property and already company utilized 2 crore for their different purposes or they have spent it and company let's say they did not spend on a capital Uh, you know assets they have spent it on something else their daily routine expenses and all and even though they could not generate any cash flow so it means automatically slowly and steadily equity value will drop in the market why company has 2 crore rupees obligation so it means bond holder has a rights of all the assets like office equipments and technology where the if company fails to repay the debts or the obligations maybe interest payments and all then bond holders has a rights to sell the property or equipment in the market to recover their money back so what you understood from this example if the debts of a company goes high let's say up to few years the this 2 crore becomes 5 crore 2 crore becomes 5 crore then automatically your equity value will be default in the market so now business has a 100% control of bond holders and in this case company will mandatorily delist all the equities from the market with no repayment of cash with no repayment of a cash so you invested 1 rupees for per shares and up to 5 years due to the debt so that equity is value become zero go and check the example of octree investment octree or something so i'm not sure exactly but yeah there was one instance where the reliance <coughs> delist the securities with no cash payment they list the delist because that institution was in debt So it means bond holder has a full control of that particular company. So where they, when the <coughs> Ambani Group, they, uh, they sorry, real, yeah, Ambani, I believe, yeah. So Ambani Group, they entered into into their their uh, the bidding process. Their first condition was they don't want the equity holders in the business because business has a no assets because they will have to repay the entire debt of a bond holder. So it means will not. pay single penny to the equity holders so equity holders value was zero if the date goes high automatically the assets go value goes down right and whatever assets that you hold as a equity stocks or whatever you know shares so that will affect if company's debt goes high why so also same example you have uh, the bond holders as a 2 crore you know the debts in this particular company and let's say this 1 rupees was the market value of a gmt company due to xyz reason if the market price goes down due to the, uh, the let's say recession fear or maybe margin profits and all the other factors also would be there if due to that if you see there is a change in price of a securities in the market then automatically bond holders will take the control how let's say price of a security drop in the market around around say 80 80 uh, 80 paise let's say 80 paise so it means so total value current value of your assets is instead 5 crore so current assets value is 2 cr so means total value of per share should be 
2 and if you see 2 cr which equivalent to your debt so here the debt and equity ratio is same so it means your business is in risk now if if the market price goes beyond the 2 crore then automatically equity uh, that bondholders will claim the ownership in your business as if the price goes below the 2 crore then bondholders money will be in risk right bondholders money will be in risk and then they will claim the ownership in the business same recent event that you can relate that is the Adani group was very concerned about the market valuation right right guys hello the Adani group was concerned right about the valuation yes sir yes just because of if the valuation affects then they, they will not get the competitive price to their assets so it means in short the long story short company transfer the rights to sell to the bond holders so when we say company's assets it means actually shares you know shares value company transfer to the bond holders through right to sell agreement so where bond holders will get the rights to sell the assets company's assets if bond uh, the company fails to uh, perform the obligation obligation it means to pay the interest payment and principal on time to time and in this process you can also try to understand few uh, corporate actions if company repay the debts then that that you can say when company repay the debt then it becomes ROC return of capital or redemption redemption ROC return of capital or you can say redemption and here if any default event occur or any if company file bankruptcy or any you know any any uh, that you know unexpected event happen then you can say that you would say delisting of securities event as well. Delisting of securities. Is this the only one exam means one way to delist the securities? No. Sometimes company will pay the consideration. So there is one example. So you you can go and check it on internet. Uh, there is a company like Elsit Investment something. So company means the board want to delist the securities they'll say something that board want yeah. to delist the securities and board is ready to pay ready to pay 1,21,000 for per share per share but shareholders they are not ready with the delisting why why they are not ready because and if you see the market price is 17 rupees 17 rupees or 2 rupees something that you can see so basically the ilsid was the one of the you know uh, undervalued stock undervalued stock so this is one of the you know uh, the company from the investment space so they are the amc asset management company they invested in sen pent and that value becomes like uh, multifold and now the whatever shares that the lcd investment has uh, got the appreciation but the actual share price of the uh, lcd investment in the market is around 2 to 5 rupees in between that you can see or 17 max to max 17 that i have seen but the fair value of LCD investment goes up to uh, 1,21,000. Even though this is not the correct calculation, the actual price was 5,10,000 where the investors or the shareholders are quoting. If company want to delist the securities, then company should pay 5,10,000 
or per shares to shareholders. See this valuation. So it means that is not the case where only uh, when the company delists the security where company will not pay anything. No. While delisting also company can pay the consideration. So everything or it is it is purely based on the uh, you know, current situation of the business. In which situation company is going to delist the securities. Same example again from the different aspect. So in this case you are seeing high value. Right. See other example like Vedanta group. Vedanta also want to delist the securities. Vedanta's price which is 250 rupees something in market. And uh, the board announced the delisting process with 350 rupees shares. Again it was in a premium but the Vedanta shareholders they are not ready to delist the securities. They are not agreed with the board decision. So then they didn't participate. If company announced, if company announced delisting, in case of, in case of uh, the, uh, you know, what I would say, bankruptcy, then you don't require anybody's, you know, uh, voting and all. So company can directly delist it with the approval from the SEBI or regulator of that particular country, I would say. But in case of normal delisting, so they cannot if the shareholders deny the delisting process. So minimum 70% shareholders should be ready with the delisting decision. If not, then you cannot. Simple. Okay. So you can put a practical examples. Those are very, very practical. Go and check it. Their prospectus as well. Vedanta was ready to delist. But shareholders, they are not agree with the 350 and they are, they are not interested. And here with the ill-seed investment, there is an issue with the value. Shareholders, they are ready with the delisting, but they want 5 lakh 10,000. And company already quoted, means board already quoted 1, 1, 1 to 1, means 1 lakh 21,000 per per shares. So any questions so far, guys? Yes, no. If you have any questions, you can ask. Don't wait so that you will ask questions at the end of the session. You can you can ask questions as and when you have a questions. Okay. So we, we have discussed about the, you know, the purpose of corporate actions, but how you can relate that purpose with the extent, right? So company has a purpose of restructuring, company has a purpose of impacting of share price, company has a purpose of distribution of profit. Then again, the important is if you have a purpose to do something, so it should be, it should be pre-decided. It should be pre-decided, then date should be decided. So there should be already, you know, rule or the terms, it should be decided. Then only you can execute that particular action, right? Then only you can, you know, serve the purpose. For example, company want to announce or company want to distribute the dividend. But let's assume it, there is no payment date given, then what makes sense? Just put a logic. Payment date, add to announce or TBA. In a corporate, uh, corporate, corporate or in a corporate action process, you would see the date like TBA. So it means when company announce a dividend on X date, fund accountant record the dividend receivable. Record the dividend receivable. But let's say you recorded the dividend receivable one year back and still company is at to announce payment debt. 
So that is a TBA to be announced. Then what makes sense? Right? Just to record the accruals or dividend receivables, but still you haven't received anything, then that doesn't make any sense at all. Right? So it means so that particular purpose when whatever purpose that you have or company has, that should be that should be in line with the rules and regulations. Otherwise, that doesn't make any sense. And it should be announced. It should be declared through the formal and legal notice. It should be notified to the all investors. It should be notified to the all market participants. And that should be even the all the important dates and all everything that should be communicated to the uh, all the participants and all what is the purpose of X state what is the purpose of record date? what is the purpose of uh, the entitlement date entitlement it means ownership date or a trade date that all should be communicated so it means every counterpart it should be aware about all this otherwise so that doesn't make any sense to announce action but while paying the benefits or processing the benefits that you have no payment date in place or you have maybe let's say no record date in place so that doesn't make any sense at all right so the important is when we say you know the key information and all so that you can relate with the purpose Whatever purpose that you have, let's say if you have the purpose of stock split, then stock splits key information, it should be announced. Key information, it should be announced. So it means declaration date. When we say declaration date, company issues a statement declaring a specific event that you can see here. Just replace the word stock split. If company want to announce stock split, then in a declaration or in their official statement, it should be, uh, you know, drafted about the stock split, like ratio, then quantity, price, everything, whatever price should be, if it is adjustment factor is applied or not, everything, it should be drafted and notified to the, all the stakeholders, right? And here if you would say that the declaration date, it means when company announced or issued a statement, official statement about the action. So that date, you can call it as declaration date, right? And here the purpose would be company will mention about the purpose. So they have a purpose to increase or split or whatever that, you know, they want to do the uh, X, Y, Z with the share price, maybe debt or maybe profit and all. So you can relate with the purpose in that way. Then stock exchange will come into picture when company declare the date. Before that company will take the approvals from the stock exchange and regulators. Right. And then stock exchange will communicate to the company about the X date. What will be the X date? And accordingly company will declare in their statement as like X date would be this and this. X date is nothing but X date. It means expiry of corporate actions benefit date. Expiry of corporate action benefit date. It's expiry of benefits from the corporate actions. So it means after that, it will not be eligible to get the benefit of corporate action. So it should be means if you want the benefit as an investor also. If you think if you think from the accountant, then we perform the reconciliations on the basis of exit and record it. And as an investor, as an investor, if you want to invest in XYZ securities, you should invest before the exit if you are looking for any corporate action benefits it can be bonus issue stock split reverse split tender buyback 
any events if you want the benefit of corporate actions then you should enter into the particular uh, securities before the exit the so exit it means expiry date who announce exit stock exchange announce write down this stock exchange announce exit right why stock exchange announce exit for to settle the securities in a stock exchange platform and the reason is when the security settled if that security settled before the recorded then company refer that data company refer the outstanding shareholders name as per the security information or shareholders information is available with the share registrar and company process the benefits as per the recorded who announce the who announce the recorded of course company announce it company pay the corporate action benefits as per the recorded and that's what ex date versus recorded becomes very very important if you see the purchase quantity of 100 on ex date so it should be the same on record it as well if there is a difference let's say here you have a 100 and on record it you have a 50 quantities so it means company will pay the benefit as per 50 quantities only and that's what the reconciliations between ex date and record it that becomes essential in corporate and apart from that again date wise ex date and record it both are the very key and critical dates key and critical dates without ex date or without record it you cannot process the corporate action declaration date that is fine when company announced it but you don't need to mention that declaration date anywhere in the system and we don't record it even but ex date we should have it record it again you will have to update in your system while creating the corporate actions and from a fund accounting perspective as well ex date and record it becomes very essential role while reconciling the positions in the books of fund when you record the dividend receivables on ex date let's say you created the receivables for 100 and you have received cash also 100 that absolutely fine then you don't need to worry even though you don't need to check the ex date and record it or even payment date and all you recorded receivables and you received cash you recorded 100 you have received 100 what if you recorded 100 but you have received 50 and in this scenario you ex date and record it plays very crucial role then you will how to initiate the investigation and check it why you have received less amount because you have recorded the accruals of 100 usd different purposes we have already discussed about the you know in the dividend uh, the session when we had income processing session we discussed about why we received less payment but yes so the here just i'm trying to explain about the importance of corporate actions or the key dates of a corporate actions so date becomes a very very essential so you should know it so on a ex date how much that you had a positions and on a record it how much positions that actually settled in your demat account so on the basis of that you can relate and then perform the reconciliation from the fund accounting perspective so all the actions all the actions you will have for for all the actions you will have to provide reconciliations and investigation to check it what was the positions on ex date or what was the accrual amount that you recorded on ex date and how much amount that you have received on payment date payment date also that we call it as a value date
So can you tell me what is the difference between value date and payment date? Anyone? So, uh, value date is the date in which actual payment is made, and hmm? and uh, payment date is the date on which payment is announced. Payment only the payment will be announced. Payment date. Let's uh, call it as a payment processing date. Okay. Yeah, only the announcement of payment is made, but in value date they will actually <laughs> payment will be processed on that day. Payment processing date. And value date it means it's an actual payment date. So sometime what happened? Let's say, let's say twentieth of April was the actual payment date. Payment date, but you received payment on twenty first. So there is a delay in payment processing, right? Then twenty first, you can call it as a payment processing where you are making payment to the shareholders or maybe uh, the institutions and all, right? And twentieth of April that becomes your value date. So actual value date was twenty, yes. So which was already decided, but due to the uh, technical reason or maybe some time. So let's say you haven't received payment or maybe check was submitted, the check got delayed to clear it in the bank systems and all. So due to that issues, you would see the difference between value date and payment date. But yes, the important is X date, record date, and payment dates. So that plays very crucial role in corporate action cycle. So one date is missing from the you know um, this particular presentation. So can you can you tell me if you can guess so which date is missing? Because without that date, this particular you know corporate action uh, the cycle or whatever that you can say so that is kind of incomplete. So one date is missing. So are you aware about what is the date? So I'll give a hint. So you can call it as a trade date. Yes. But in a corporate actions, what we call to that date? Settlement date. No, settlement date would be this. Recorded, you can call it as actual settlement date. माइनस वन X date minus one would be your, here that you can see entitlement date. Declaration date uh, it's my after the after the declaration date. So declaration date would be you know first when the company declare it, and in a declaration company announce X date record date and payment date. So stock exchange notified. Stock exchange notified shareholders. Should buy the securities or trade in the securities before the X date. What it means? If the shareholders or investors want the benefit of corporate action, so they should they should buy the securities before the X date. Correct? Before the X date, not before the declaration buy. date, but before the X date. If you buy want the and hold, of, right? Yes. Sorry. So that should be buy, bought and hold, right? It should be settled as well. So when you buy it, see if you if you sell the same date, then you will not the you will not be able to uh, get the benefit of corporate actions. You should buy and hold it. Simple. If you just buy and sell it on the same date, then you will not get the benefit of corporate actions. No, I'm asking about the settlement date. So even the settlement of dividend should happen. Like trades should happen because 
usually it will be the cycle of p plus 1 or p plus 2 right in that scenario hmm. uh, so holding of the shares means not as a trade date it should be settled the positions am i right क्लेम्स इन योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट मीन्स that is a kind of a manual processing cycle right so i'll i'll explain it few dates again few more dates that you would see but the yes, entitlement dates again is a crucial rule entitlement date still you are able to see my screen right guys yes yes okay yes sure as so entitlement date entitlement date you can call it as ownership date write down all these dates So where when you trade in securities, so you will get the ownership of securities. So when you purchase the securities on entitlement date, and when you hold the securities until the next date, then you will get the benefit of upcoming or come due or you know coming corporate actions uh, event. As simple as that. Okay. So here, so next date before the next date, so there will be entitlement date. So you can. write down in that way draw this chart if you want declaration date entitlement date ex date record it and payment date so x minus 1 so entitlement date plus 1 would be ex date right ex date plus 2 the generic rule is ex date Plus two would be record date, and record date ideal scenario is or generic rule that we have is record date plus forty five days would be a payment date. So maybe within one week also that you would expect, or maybe sometime so you would see, I know uh, the delay in the payment processing as well. But within a forty five days, the payment it should receive. right so this is the ideal scenario here so uh, x entitlement date you can call it as a trade date so other names also you can write it down ownership date then record date you can call it as actual settlement date record it you can call it as actual settlement so that would be the actual settlement where where the uh, company will announce it but sometime we would say security will settle on a t plus 1 day basis as well t plus 1 day basis as well or let's say uh, the security was purchased on a declaration date so maybe that security settled on x date or maybe that security settled on a x plus 1 date so that also happened so when the security settled before the x uh, after the x date and before the record date so or maybe after the record date then that date you can call it as a cst cst it means contractual settlement date contractual settlement date so you can call it as contractual settlement date cst and uh, from the company side so one more you know name that you would see for a record it is book close date book close date book close date book close date record date actual settlement date and record it all are same all are same but yes contractual settlement it that will be different from the actual settlement date bcd or record date
payment it, you can call it as sometimes system, you know, STP, uh, system through processing date, payment date, and value date. GD means value date. Write down all this information that is required to even perform reconciliations or set up the corporate actions in the, uh, in the, in the system. Okay. So can we can you go ahead then? Any question, guys? Sir, CSD, if you can repeat contracts. Contractual settlement date. When, so apart from, let's say if your trade settles apart from record date, so that date you can call it as a settlement date. It can be any date. If that particular security settled on record date, that becomes your actual settlement date. Apart from record date, if security settled, then that becomes your contractual settlement date. Maybe let's say record date plus one. After the record date, here uh, security settled. So recorded plus one. So whatever the date would be. So on that date you can call it as contractual settlement date. So let's see if I have any example. So let's say um, recorded is May 16. Let's assume it. So May and particular security settled on May 17. So now if you see BCD means book close date, record date and actual settlement date. All would be same and your security actually settled on 17. So 17 becomes, 17 may becomes the contractual settlement date. But does that not call the actual settlement date because hmm? that is where actual settlement is happening rather than a contractual T plus two? Yeah, that happened due to due to the delay in the delivery of securities. <laughs> let's say security. Let's say let's assume it. Take the example of Google securities. So you purchase the Google securities from the XYZ broker. So you purchase the quantities of hundred. On X date means before the X date you purchase it actually and on X date you are holding around 100 quantities but on an actual settlement date, actual settlement date or actual record date, so you have only 50 securities. Right? 50 securities. So now the important here is why there is a discrepancy of 50 because you are holding the 100 securities on X state and when as an accountant or as a you know uh, the corporate action analyst when you checked it in your system you got to know only 50 quantities that you are holding I means uh, the available on actual settlement date or recorded or maybe say uh, book close date this one then what would be the reasons to uh, have this in you know, a discrepancy in this right. particular uh, contract or trade maybe due to let's say maybe due to uh, SBL security borrowing and lending so your counterparts so that I means whosoever that lend the security to the borrower and borrower is yet to deliver that securities to the lender on time and just because of that uh, that particular you know, delivery got uh, postponed and here on a state you have definitely you have obligation ownership obligation or uh, you have that uh, rights to receive your securities but due to the SBL security borrowing and lending you haven't received securities on time so in the books of company recorded it means it's a books of company and in the books of company only the 50 quantities are available 
so when you contact with the broker then you got to know broker will settle broker is uh, now the broker is communicating with the counterparts and that counterparty uh, will provide or process the securities on a 17th of may then only securities will be in your books of account so in that case means that scenario you can call it as the uh, contractual settlement date so where the security will be settled after the actual contractual settlement date so that date becomes the csd contractual settlement date for you and here you will have to process the payment you will have to process the payments manually for 50 quantities because 50 quantities will settle here right 50 quantities will settle here sometime due to trade fail as well so that you can see or maybe uh, incorrectly recording of trades on a x date so those are the those are the challenges why there will be discrepancy due to security borrowing and lending maybe incorrect instructions recorded by the brokers or maybe incorrect order notes sent by the uh, that front office team and later on it got cancelled so that also happened but here two things are very important one which is see when the csd will come into picture and why csd will come into picture CSD will come into picture in case of valid SBL, valid SBL and trade fails. What it means? Why the CSD will come into picture in case of valid fails and valid SBLs? If it is a valid SBLs and it, if that agreement uh, it's in place like let's say if what if the trade fails right let's say that agreement in place in that case only the contractual settlement date come into picture instead actual settlement date particular security will be settled on XYZ date and benefits will be processed to the investors manually that happened and sometime you would see that as a uh, as accountant let's say as a reconciliation analyst and if you are not able to uh, validate the positions then you should check the sbl agreement or maybe trade fail agreement if the trade fail agreement or sbl agreement if it is there and if you see the discrepancies in the quantity then you don't need to worry about anything because those positions are already equipped with the sbl security borrowing and lending agreement or trade fail agreements because those are valid trade fails and in case of valid trade fails come not company but broker or custodians those uh, will be entitled to benefits the corporate actions benefits uh, to the you know investors maybe not on this you know actual payment date so after the payment date so they settle the manual payments or claims in the books of fund and as a fund accountant we uh, if let's say what happened on, on a payment date what happened i'll tell you so actual scenario what happened exactly take the sbl example so gmt fund gmt fund <coughs> purchase the quantities of uh, 1000 and then company announced dividend of let's say 5 right so on x date also you are seeing the same positions so dividend amount would be 5 div amount you check the dividend on x date and as accountant so uh, as accountant you recorded it so how you record it so dividend receivable to income right so you recorded 5000 5000 
but when you received cash on a payment date so let's say you have received cash to receivable let's say you have received you know 2500 cash then you got shocked because you received uh, you recorded receivables 5000 and you have received cash of 2500 when you started the investigation you got to know so on X date we had a 1000 position but on a recorded only the 500 positions got settled and that's what company paid 2000 500 rupees to you directly on payment date and that you have received in a bank account then again uh, you have you research let's say further and then you got to know the uh, two sorry 500 securities it was lent to the let's say uh, PIMCO fund so PIMCO fund was the borrower And the agreements, so it means this SBL agreements, so which was already in place and that already uh, provided the terms like if the borrower receives the benefits of corporate actions, then borrower will reverse that benefits. So on behalf of borrower, the broker will uh, reverse the, you know, the corporate action benefits to the actual owner of a securities. So it means after the payment date, after the payment date, you can reach out to the brokers. Then you can provide the reference of SBL that you have a SBL agreement in place where broker means let's say NT, BNY, whosoever, let's say NT. So you can reach out to the NT. So NT can refer the same SBL agreement and they will ensure the settlement of dividend or settlement of corporate action benefit in your DMAT account on time. So that date you can call it as a then contractual settlement date because new date will come into picture for a remaining amount. So remaining quantities would be 500 with this 2500 for this particular thing you can set up a new contractual settlement date and you can process the dividend <coughs> or you can process the corporate action. Right? So any question guys come on are you there yes no yes sir okay. so difference between x date and recorded so already we have discussed so here so the process flow that will brief and then we'll uh, for today we'll see here so I'll I'll take uh, ten more minutes. Okay. So this this would be your process flow, and the other participants I would say so. Uh, who will be the participants in corporate actions and all? So how can I reach out to them? So how uh, how we can escalate? You know the queries to them and all. So if you can see this particular <coughs> process flow then you will understand so who will be the counterparties and all right who announced the corporate action come on guys answer it who announced the corporate action companies board of directors issuers or company issuers yeah right who maintain the data means uh, the investors data for a company stop stop regulators not regulators regulator, oh, sorry, care about it. regulator will control it but regulator why regulator regulator will maintain for their purpose not for the company purpose a depository pass the participant share register are So have you heard the name about link link in time
लिंक एंड फाइन नो यस नो मे बी हैव यू हर्ड लिंक इन टाइम लिंक इन टाइम इज द इंडिया पॉप्युलर शेयर रजिस्टर आर हू मेंटेन द डेटा हू मेंटेन द डेटा ऑफ ऑल द आउटस्टैंडिंग शेयर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कंपनी सो एक्चुअली कंपनी हायर शेयर रजिस्टर आर और लिंक companies like linkedin time or sometime even your depositories also they can you know provide share register or facility uh, to the companies so share register or is nothing but who maintain the data of all the outstanding securities and they provide uh, you know uh, the consultation to the company on uh, corporate actions as well let's say company want to distribute the dividend company will quote the amount let's say company has 1000 rupees and that company want to distribute then share registrar will confirm the how many shares are outstanding let's say share registrar confirm like 100 shares are outstanding and these are the shares who are holding the securities so then on a record date the share registrar will check the how many shares Uh, or shareholders are entitled to get the benefit of corporate actions so on a record that share register are will check the data and on the basis of that corporate actions benefits will be processed and so here if you see share register are check the outstanding shares and calculate the ratio 1000 divided by 100 becomes 10 so 10 rupees dividend will be for per shares so this information this information will be sent out to the custodians prime brokers or uh, the investors like retail investors also domestic brokers brokers international brokers banks or asian banks middlemen i would say everyone right the notification will sent out that the company has the 100 Uh, shareholder outstanding shareholders and uh, the dividend amount is 1000 and if, if if we calculate the per shares dividend so that becomes 10 rupees for per security so where uh, each shareholders uh, or each shares will receive right so you would see in that way shareholders prepare the draft and communicate to the all participants who are Uh, who are the part of this corporate action business line right then then custodians and agents again they notify investment banks or their uh, investment banks or uh, the hedge funds pension funds or maybe individual you know institutions fund houses and all why see custodians they maintain the data of you know uh, their clients and investment banks why investment banks will come into picture if i take the nt why investment banks will come into picture because on behalf of funds investment banks they purchase it on behalf of their clients they purchase the securities so it means custodians will process the corporate actions to the investment banks and investment banks uh, will process the benefits to the end users okay again if you are not able to understand why again i am not able to understand like why investment banks will come into picture so in short i'll tell you so we have a different types of markets one which is broker driven market broker driven market so in a broker driven market so individual participants they cannot buy the securities directly so they will have to approach to the brokers and then brokers will buy the securities from the market so that market we call it as a broker driven market so other market is order driven market order driven market for example nsc it's a order driven market bsc order driven market so what you can do you can open your demat uh, broker account with the xyz you know uh, broker let's say icici so where icici will give you the access of nsc and bsc trading platform and then you can directly place order 
right but if i take the example of hedge funds so they cannot send the order directly so they will have to send the order to the broker with the quotation and then broker will buy the securities on behalf of their clients here in order driven market directly investors are sending order but in a broker driven market so the investors they are sending order to the brokers because individual investors has obligations so they cannot buy directly that's simple as that and the other market which is agent driven market the are driven market so in a money market without agent you cannot buy the securities right so in a money market you cannot buy the securities directly so agent it means it's a banks who plays role as agent if you want to purchase any instrument like repos then you will have to approach to the bank right so bank will advise you how you can purchase the repos or any any other you know call loan and on or any any uh, the money market instruments if you are interested to buy it then you will have to go through the agents so bank will play as a agent and bank will also charge the agent fees to you so that becomes the agent driven market so agent to agent you know uh, the transaction would be there so agent that plays role as a first counterparty and the investor plays as a second counterparty so See, I'm not directly associated with this particular account. But let's say I'll have to transfer money to the HDFC bank, and you are from there. Then let's say you have approach to the Axis Bank, then you will transfer money to the Axis Bank, and then Axis and HDFC will come into picture. So that market we call it as an Asian bank. So you would see that in a money market, and order driven it means NAC, BSC, or NYC. So basically, this is for a retail investors like us who directly send the order, and broker driven market is for. the uh, hni investors and <coughs> and the big players i would say right big wells or big uh, investors or institutions where they directly buy the securities uh, from the market through the investment banks and that's what investment banks come into picture where custodians notify to the investment banks like nt bny jp morgan goldman sachs right that's the reason they will come into picture the reason is so they are the part of broker driven market and most of the investment banks play role as a prime brokers so they buy the securities or sell the securities on behalf of their clients right and then of course the corporate actions after the notification so validation of corporate action it means corporate action processing team or maybe end of fund accounting or maybe you know separate team under prime broking and all that you would see where they validate the corporate actions with a mt or uh, 64 swift message so i'll send you the snip of you know swift message how the swift message looks like swift message is nothing but it's just notification so where swift institution swift it means a uh, society for worldwide you know international financial telecommunication network so that institution provide messages message types with the uh, <coughs> information like <coughs> trade date settlement date record date uh, types of corporate actions and all all that information will be you know communicated through mt64 and then finally so entitlement entitled it, it means benefits entitlements will get credited to the traders clients on a paid date or we went based on mt56 suit so again so uh, on a payment date we refer the mt66 suit message code and accordingly set up the instructions or pay the instructions whatever instructions that we had we process it paid <coughs> and confirm and communicate to the counterparts but from the fund accounting perspective so you should see the mt566 while performing the reconciliation because uh, mt566 receives on a payment date sometime that you would see on mt566 the amount which seems something different and in a system you are saying something different <coughs> then in that case you can approach to the payment team because payment team they have processed the incorrect payment 
let's say your receivables what your receivables that you have recorded means uh, you will record the receivables on the basis of mt564 so you recorded receivables on the basis of mt564 and when you received mt566 let's say mt564 and mt566 that is tied so that is matching exactly but when you when you have actually received payment in your bank account so that is or uh, let's say your internal accounting systems <coughs> you are saying something different then you can escalate that to the corporate action team where corporate action team will work on it and they'll adjust the payment and accordingly they'll communicate to you because if the swift message contains the valid information so it means definitely that the corporate action team internal corporate actions team so they have recorded it incorrectly or maybe they have processed it incorrectly from their side so from uh, from the fund accounting side major activity would be to validate the corporate actions so how you can validate it check the mt566 check the mt564 so on x date you can check it mt564 and on a payment date you can check it mt566 for a uk market there would be crest again which is a depository uh, for a uk market or uk uh, all the uk countries <coughs> they manage their all this communication like you know swept through the crest so where uh, you can refer their notices or crest notices or maybe uh, you know messages from the euro uh, euro clear and for a bond or fixed income instrument so you can see a clear part clear part provides the information about the bonds or uh, loans and debentures or any other fixed income instruments and especially for a loans which i have seen like market also those are the platforms which provide information about <coughs> the corporate action so you can refer to that okay anyways so we'll continue our session i mean from the uh, next session so we required again uh, two to three hours so it means next two sessions on a corporate actions to cover in details <coughs> we'll continue with our session not now but from next uh, week with the same topics like different types of corporate actions because directly then we'll jump on uh, next week on the uh, split buyback okay tender <coughs> we'll continue with the uh, types of corporate actions and all from the next session so now you can unmute and ask your questions whatever questions that you have so i'm done with the today's session if you don't have any questions you can say it if you have then ask it any questions if you have an interview lined up you can if you have any doubts you can ask about that as well come on or if you are working in any process like you know, you're seeing any corporate actions and all but if you're not able to reconcile you can ask about that also that's right so shivraj would that would not have any corporate action types which one those uh, redeemable balls call redeemable like bonds so. yeah so means like what i'm asking is for that kind of instruments so stock split and all are related to equities right most of the times yeah so for the fixed income types of products what are the type type of corporate actions you can say so about bonds
So in case of fixed income, so corporate actions type would be redemptions. In redemptions also you would see the different types like partial redemptions. Sorry. Hmm? Redemptions. Redemption in shares also come into this, right? <clears throat> Redemption of bonds. Here Redemption in shares. So for a redemption of shares, you can call it as you know return of capital. You only got it to the return of capital even when you are returning the shares to the uh, because here you can put a logic right equity shares we call it as a capital but uh, bond bonds or uh, the loans we never call it as a capital right we call it as a loans who is trying to join Kiran Kumar. Correct? Yes, no, maybe. Because equity or preference shares uh, that investment, we call it as a capital. Go and check the balance sheet of company also. But bonds, loans, we never call it as a capital. We call it as a loans. The company taken a loans and we record it separately as a loans. Correct? And when you return the equity shares amount, then you can treat as a return of capital. <laughs> but while returning capital, then sometime you would see limitations, limitations in terms of uh, in terms of processing corporate actions. Then you might see here events like redemptions, delisting. And then withdrawal kind of events but same events you would see here as well redemptions partial redemptions fully redemptions <coughs> call redemptions then other types would be Conversion. Coupon also. Conversions. Conversions into. Conversions into preference. And common equity. And then. The other would be coupon processing. Coupon processing, maybe annual or quarterly, right? So that you can see. Sometime here, uh, the events that you can see, like uh, you know, pay down as well. Sorry, pay down, partial pay down. So those events you would see end of fixed income, conversion of securities into preference shares, conversion of securities into common equity, redemptions, partial redemptions, fully redemptions, maybe call redemptions, put redemptions, All right. So those terms you can see put and call, or call and put, those events would be and that we create in the systems as well. And with equity products, there are so many. Assimilation, buyback, tender, DREAP, dividend reinvestment plan, cash and stock, 
cash dividend, bonus issue, stock dividend, stock split, merger and acquisition, a mandatory conversion, a return of capital. So those events you can see with the equity product, common equity. You can note down all these events as well, please. Any other question? Come on. So the accounting entries for all of these suras would stand the same like receivable and how we deal with and then would there be any difference? Accounting entries because for... Because these are callable, yeah, for these fixed income events. See, for you from the fund accounting perspective, in the fixed income product, for you the matter is cash. Mm -hmm. Cash. If I take the example of partial redemption, what happened? You received cash, right? So, when you sell the securities, what entry that you can record? Come on. When you sell the investment, what happens? Receive cash. To which account? Sales. Investment. Sales. Then you can add here redemption of securities, partial redemption of bonds. Simple. So cash account debit to you have received cash for a partial redemption of a bonds. Partial redemption of a bonds. If mm -hmm. company announced fully redemptions, then you can record the entry like cash account, debit to fully bond investment redemptions. Because that bond investment will out from your fund book, right? So when you received cash. Yeah. When we say pay downs, cash account debit to pay downs on investment. Where? In a in a common in a comment, see for you it means it's a sell off investment. When we say redemption, it means you can treat like that you are uh, the fund sold the investment. Simple <clears throat> because when you subscribe or when, when you participate in a uh, investment, what happened? We record it as a purchase, like an uh, investment account debit to cash, correct? When you enter into investment. We record the entry like investment account debit, investment account debit to cash and when you sell it, <coughs> cash account debit to investment. Just add the words like partial redemptions, call port, or uh, fully redemptions. You know, depends on the the redemption types. Just add that word. That's it. <laughs> and in case of normal corporate actions accounting entries, so there yeah, they will have to first of all validate it whether it is a cash or stock if it is a cash in case of cash we treat as a benefits right we treat as an income but in case of let's say stock split so you don't need to prepare any accounting entries in the books of account and we don't prepare it even but there will be accounting entry in the demat account right there will be entry in the mm -hmm. books of demat account when you when you uh, purchase the securities what happened <coughs> when you purchase any securities think from the stock side when you purchase the stock what happened exactly 
will receive the stock and then cash will go out when you purchase it the stocks will be debited right let's say you purchase 100 quantities but when company when company announce the uh, stock split hmm. when company announce stock split this becomes your old securities automatically so this particular securities it needs to be transfer or transfer to the company's account back so how you can transfer them then automatically custodian will uh, you can send custodian will send the notifications to the depositor where depository or maybe custodian vice versa so they will remove the securities from the accounts and when the securities will remove then again security or quantity you can treat as assets assets what comes in debited assets what goes out that will be credited so you can remove that particular assets from the accounts first of all you recorded debited 100 plus and when you record the credit minus so that becomes zero now in your demat account there is no security right so post corporate action post ca company will transfer company will transfer let's say ratio was 10 is to 1 so it means 10 into 100 if you do this around 1000 new securities that you will receive new securities and again that will received in your demand account so here you can see the balance of 1000 securities so this is how we check even while performing the reconciliations also we check the custodian records like this we check the pre corporate i'll show you that as well you know in next session <laughs> how you can check it the data uh, in, in your custodian book <laughs> with one example so that you can verify it what was the old positions debited credited so that becomes zero and when you have a new positions then you can see the balance automatically so here the statement means demand statements it will be updated automatically because now you have 1000 shares maybe the previous price that you would be able to see like 100 into 10 which is 1000 so post corporate action so you might see price which is 1 and again total value would be 1000 <coughs> there is no change in the valuation but the number of securities got changed and first old, uh, the 100 securities got debited or removed from the account so in this way we maintain the accounting for stocks or quantity. <coughs> so here you don't need to prepare the actual accounting entry. So it is kind of a transfer of security, debit credit, where that will be managed by your custodian and uh, <coughs> depositories. And this is the part of your stock reconciliation, stock record. So are you the part of stock recon, anyone here in the group? 